Hey guys, this is Cruz Roy with the FW200 3D helicopter. I mean, there's a few videos on there uh, about um, there's a new upgraded GPS. I just wanted to do this from a standpoint that I just got it in. So I just got the GPS, the updated GPS. Um, this FW200 flies fine for me but I picked up the GPS kit. Um, so what we're gonna do is, there's nobody really just going through uh, a complete installation or what's needed or what's not needed or anything, so I figured I'd do this. Um, there are a few little clips on how to put the GPS back together and everything, but I think there's a little bit more involved with that, especially if you got fat fingers like mine and uh, bad eyes like mine other people have the same problems but enough of the jibber jabber it's supposed to lock your satellites a lot quicker with the fw 200 i think the 200 is a lot better bird manufacturing wise than the fw 450 uh, most of their versions they keep upgrading them but, but it's had the least of the problems uh, i don't know why they did a GPS because this seemed to lock in pretty good the way it was um, but it's just a better M10 I think blue locks they call it a G block type GPS uh, that can pick up satellites better um, but what I want to start with let me take the uh, main blades off get these out of the way okay so main blades are out of the way you don't have to do this I'm gonna take the canopy off which is something you need to do all right take the canopy off now here's the flight controller slash GPS all-in-one it's the way the FW was built and I guess now I mean we were talking and somebody said that they had the new black uh, flight flight uh, flight controller and GPS you're not getting a new flight controller but you are getting an updated GPS a lot of people say it's metal but from what I understand if you put metal over GPS it ain't gonna work at all so I, th I would say it's metal with a plastic cap and we'll know when I take it apart the thing I want to talk about I'm gonna videotape this so I can kind of see the movements even if you have to take a picture uh, locate your wires this looks like a three wire with a small connector and then you have a four wire with a small connector and then this is a little larger connector and I'm assuming it has three wires so that's probably for the tail I've never taken this apart, so this is the first on me. Um, and then on this side, again, you could have the main motor. These wires look a little bigger, so I'm gonna call this the main motor. And then there's three servos. Now, these three servos have the same connectors, so you have to put them in the same direction back on here, otherwise it's not gonna be right. So, if you take a picture of that, first one second one and the third one here at least you'll know where they go back together I'll probably screw up during the video all right so be careful with these I mean their GPS wires from Flywing are pretty soft so I'm assuming I mean let's get to the pack let me put this down for a second we don't miss up I mean, this is the way it comes, all right? It's not a bad price, I think $29. You have to wait for shipping. Um, yeah, the, the cap is plastic. Um, then you got these little micro screws, so be careful not to lose those. In fact, I have a, I have a magnetic block, which I'm probably gonna let them sit in there until I get ready to use them. 
All right, so you got screws, and then you have a metal housing, which right inside, they just plop the, the GPS in there, you know, all by itself. Now, I don't think this is tape. You don't touch that. It's a protective coating. Um, so be careful with this. This is your new GPS puck. And if you look at it, it's an M10. That's the new GPS is coming out. They can grab different satellites from different countries, not just GLONASS. They can do the Russian satellites and everything. That's why they get a better connection. So be gentle with this. So I'm going to put it down here. Um, this is metal. So it's aluminum. And it comes with a lower case and if you see it has some kind of gasket and this must be for heat what I don't notice is a new sticky pad for the uh, controller so I'll dig something up all right so let's push that aside like I said be careful with the GPS block but it doesn't come with any instructions which Flywing, a lot of their stuff doesn't come with much of an instructions. The helicopter comes with a little book. Uh, the 350, the 450 comes with a little book, you know, and it just has the basics on there. So you have to rely on other people's experiences or, you know, problems. So anyways, let's get to this. I would be very careful tugging on these wires. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pull lightly. Okay, that one seemed to click pretty easily and see I'm being gentle here and that one don't want to come let's try this one yeah I'm not liking that either so let me get something that might be as a sharp poker okay guys sorry about that I got my trusty construction blade and I'm going to gently try to pull these out. It might be a mistake, but I'll start with this bigger one. It looks like it has a tab here. But just be careful. Yeah, I'm not liking how delicate these little wires are. that at all. Let me try the upper one. Okay, got that one out. Now make sure you look at these connectors. The prongs for the electrical, like this one's in the middle, but we don't use that one. This one's on the lower end, and this one's on the lower too. All right. Let's pick at the big one here again. It sure does look like there's a tab on there. If you look real close, there's like this little tab. I'm not having good... Not have a good time with this one. This is into your controller. Okay, so I pointed right at that little clip and just pried it out. All right. So that's that side. Like I said, I'm doing this video too, so I have to go back and see these wires. That's what I'll do. But if you look in there, it had some kind of clip mechanism. But how do you get at it with this all screwed together? All right, so next, let's go on the other side. Like I said, you know what this is. 
this is your battery plug so that's easy enough and this is the main motor this one the bigger one on that side was a tail motor and boy that flight controller in there doesn't feel very nice when you start tugging and pulling everything wiggles so that's one of those Molex or JX with JXTs so that's your main motor so that one should be easy enough I'm just gonna tuck it in with the main motor it's the three servos that you could screw up because they're all the same but I think if you just if you can get them out in order they're all intertwined with each other they might just stay that way but man I'm putting some pressure on there they just don't want to come out so I'm gonna do this like that a little pry poke like I say they seem to be all intertwined in a way that but this is the flight controller so you gotta be careful but man they're pretty tough and there's small wires for us people with big fingers okay that's number two Number two. I don't know what servos they are, if they're ailerons or elevators. Oop, okay. Now if I can kind of leave them in this order, but be very careful, you could end up with a broken wire. Let's push these out of the way. All right, so now how do I get the controller off? Problem is, it's got a nice thick pad there, and they should give you this pad because I don't you don't know if it has a sponge pad under here. And to me, it does look that way. Most flight controllers have that pad. See it? It's a real it's kind of a thick pad. It's about an eighth of an inch. And what I got is, I have 3 and 3M tape, and it's about half the thickness. I'm going to match it up, but I don't know if this flight controller is supposed to be solid mount, because there's no instructions, or is it supposed to be, you know, a spongy mount. I'm going to say by the way I can move it, that it has some flex, so the controller will work. So, I mean, that's something that Flywing should give you as an extra pad. I don't even see it on their parts listing where you could get one, like a replacement uh, flight controller or ESC pad. It probably comes with a new flight controller, which these are $175 or so. So you got to watch that part of it. Now I'm trying to think how to get this off. To try with the blade again. I don't know, I'm really wondering if I should just take the ESC plate off, make my life easier. Is that the same as the prop? Sure is. I'm going to take the whole ESC plate off. gonna feel safer that way don't want to break anything else all right problem is that screw goes through both goes through the uh, main baron the main motor baron and the frame So that screws a little longer. I mean, I don't know if you have to do that. This is the way I feel I'm going to do it. I don't want to mess around with... I 
breaking something with my big hands. So this is the way I'm going to do it. We're going to get the main frame out of there. And there you go, right off the ESC frame. Let's put the heli there. Alright, so that's some pretty thick foam in there. Um, I'm going to gently try to first I'm going to check the front of this housing is flush with the front of the mount. Alright, so we got to put the placement back in the same place. They seem to have it flush on one side and overhanging on another. So I think that's just a manufacturing fail. What I do have is some dental floss. And what I'll do is tie it on this, on this leg, and see if I can come down Come down and just slice this tape right off. Like I said though, the problem is whoop, tape stronger than the dental floss. <sighs> Alright, so I got partially through there. So I got partially through. I'm just gonna slowly open it up and let's get the blade in there. But see, these are the little things you don't see in the video. You see them taking this apart, but you don't see all the little issues you could have here. Like I said, you don't want to break anything. off it's left with some adhesive I don't know if you're supposed to try to save this Let me take the glue off of this end let's take the glue off the pad So that looks like a sponge. I'm not happy about that because I don't have any sponge left. I do have the 3M black tape. I want to make sure this is clean. Alright, so that's Got some in the battery track. All right, somewhat clean. I can get some alcohol on that in a minute. Let's put that aside. Now, it's all over the controller here. I couldn't save it. It is kind of sticky, but maybe if I were to use a heat gun. But. We just need to get stuff off. Like I said, that's like a sponge and this is a little thinner. So I don't know, I might use two pieces of 3M. Make up the difference. The 3M is a lot stronger than this. This is just a sponge. But I think Flywing, you should add that. I really do. I really think you should add that to the kit. I mean, how much more would the kit be? A dollar? Um, so now, this looks like a micro Phillips on here. Let me find a very, very small Phillips. 
Okay, that seems good. Alright, let me put this aside for now. We'll use my handy dandy screwdriver tool. You know what I'm going to do? Keep them from rolling off. Use your removed sponge here. Your removed sponge and stick those screws on there. And you won't lose them just in case you need them. But I mean, there is literally, I don't know if there's a document download, someone can kind of comment. Because I'm not sure. But I couldn't find one. Alright, so this is kind of breaking free. Uh, so this part is plastic. I'll just put that here. Um, from what it looks like, if this one has sticky stuff on it, I'm assuming this one does too. So I would be very, very careful. I'm gonna see if I can get the SR01 off. In fact, if you if you look at the V3 450, it has the same chip, except it's not a plug-in chip like this. I'm gonna see if I can unplug this. So I unplugged the module. I'll put it with the old casing. And it has another plug-in board right here. So there's two plug-in boards. Oh, she came off the heat sink. Good. This only has a little bit of heat tape. The new one's going to have a lot more heat tape. There's your two ESCs built into this little tiny board. All right. Screws are still in here, but we'll put them aside. I'll bag that up later. So just take a look at the the black one here oh so that's the top okay got to put it the right way though so if this is the top I'm gonna put the top on first yep so everything lines up even the connector battery the servos all right now take the bottom plate with the heat tape which has extra heat tape now uh, it has two spaced out screws large spaced and then narrow spaced so here you can see the two narrow spaced there's like a light gasket going around this I don't think it's meant to be opened and closed too many times it might be some heat goop so let me click this on first all right okay everything seems to fit there's the flight controller without GPS all right so let me put this down I gotta figure out these little screws that came with it It looks to be two black screws and four long silver screws. The silver screws must go into the black aluminum body. So let me move this stuff out of the way. Save that packaging. All right get this all lined up properly 
I mean, look at my fingers and look at these screws. I'm just going to snug them. I'm assuming the two little black screws must be for the cap for the GPS. screw like I said the tough part is no ex no instructions here so hopefully this video helps somebody out not always here to bash fly wing I'm trying to help people out and help people understand what's going on now I don't really see when it comes to the GPS puck Oh man, don't do that one. Holy crap. These are ceramic, so if you were if I was working on my kitchen countertop, that would have been bad. The ceramic would crack, but hopefully that did no damage. Just dropping it. It shouldn't. But me being a dum dum. But anyways, talking about I don't see any type of adhesive here. And I think it just holds itself. Be very careful. Very small pins here. Very, very small pins that go into very, very small holes. So I kind of do a line up tip. And hopefully that little drop I just did didn't do anything. I'm having a little bit of an alignment problem here. Try to put them in the back first. Alright, it seems to... You gotta take your time. The pins are kinda at a an angle, or could have been because I just dropped it. But make sure all the pins go in the holes they're supposed to go into. Alright. Everything looks good there. Now I'm going to take the GPS cover. If you look at it, there's two holes in it. There's also two holes in the back of the controller. So I'm going to clip these in the front first. Pop those in the back. And I think your little tiny black screws go here. Now, let me see if I can actually get these into position. As one, nice to have little magnetic tips. Alright guys, so this is the new flight controller with the new GPS. I won't be able to fly it today, but I will be able to put a battery to it and make sure everything lights up. But let's get it installed here. I'll be right back. I need to get some alcohol and some cleaner. I'll take some alcohol and saturate a rag and try to get this old glue off. 
what I want to do first, I want to just clean that up. Just wipe that clean. Yeah, let's soften up this glue. Soften it up so I can get it off of there. I don't want it being crooked. Trying to get off excess crap. Somebody probably did it way faster than me, but I'm just gonna show you the way I do it. Alright, so anyways, this locks into the frame battery holder. Probably should put that on first. I think I'll go that route. Get this little guy back together. probably don't have to take the plate off I just did it for myself so you could probably get away with not doing that I just felt that I want to do it the front one is the small smaller hex I think um, taking a plate off is a little easier for me. You can make that decision on your own. Just rip it right off, do what you have to do, put it back together, or take the plate off. And don't tell anybody how to do it. Just make it easier for yourself. It's only a few seconds to do this, so a few minutes. But I think I gotta go with two rows of tape. I really think so. That's my opinion. If you got the 3M or if you have the replacement sponge, that's the way I would go. So, what we could do, I could do it on the controller. that's what I'll probably do 3M but I really think I need two layers because that's a lot thicker Super glue. Okay, let's peel this off.
So the only thing about this 3M tape, it actually sticks to its paper that it shouldn't better than it does. But it's okay, it'll come off. Alright, here we go. Still don't think that's thick enough. Not like a sponge here. So I'm gonna go two layers. You can get this stuff at Wally Mott. Um, it's the Extreme Tape by, by Scotch. Two-faced sponge tape. Alright, I'm just gonna concentrate here and get this right on the money. I've got an easier way. And roll it out like that. Get my finger out of the way. Okay. the tape. Now let's get the paper off. The vinyl coating. I'm happier with the double double layer. see me my French tongues hanging out while I'm constipating on how to do this all right so originally I said I think it was flush to the front of this let's move this stuff out of the way and they didn't have it perfectly centered well let me check the battery thing here I want to make sure I'm not affecting the battery in any way. It shouldn't be. Alright. Let's do it. We're going to go flush with this and centered with this. The ESC plate. ESC fly barrels controller plate. Try to make it look even first before we do the squeeze. That squeeze, we don't want anything falling off, but be gentle, we don't want to break anything. The ESC plate is white, uh, gray nylon, and then you have a plastic cap over a ceramic GPS, and the flight controller we've been unbolting and unpulling and all that stuff. So, all right, so I think we're good. Look down there, nice and even on both sides, flush with the front, away from the magnet. Funny, they tell you GPS servo magnet. GPS servo magnet. All right. So the 450 now they bring the GPS away from the servos, but they tell you not to be close to the, to the servo. So just a point and bring it out. All right. So with my big crazy fingers, I will attempt to start putting plugs back in. Like I said, check your points, the little pins. You notice how they're on one side and not the other. Just make sure you put the plugs in accordingly. We're not using this plug. So I know this big one goes here. And you got a three pin and a four pin. So checking my wires. 
the pins are at the bottom. And here's the three pin. Pins at the bottom. Check your wires, make sure you didn't pull anything off. What I would recommend is get a blunt small tool and just push the connectors, but not on the wires, push it on the plastic because even with your fingers you can't quite get them flush. So you want to make sure that they're all the way in. You don't have to push hard, but even if you just use the blunt side of the plug, the uh, bit, I'm using a little bit here. All right, so that's those three. I think I'm gonna put a piece, a little teeny piece of tape there to hold this all in here. Um, motor shaft has a protector on it so I see a wire very close and a lot of people have been complaining about the wires hitting the uh, the wire I mean the, the shafts hitting the wires and cutting through them but I don't see anything that looks like that here all right let me go to the other side like I said I tried to leave them in sequence all tied together here so we should be good I'm going to start, I'm going to look at all the wires, make sure the holes are all facing down. So this is number one. I don't know what servos they are. I could have took the time to tell you, but just get them in the correct order. You'll know when you boot her up and she don't move in the right direction, that's all. And this is where the big fat fingers come in. Not nice to have. Good to have if you want to crack a bottle of wine open, but... Alright. Okay, there's three servos. Again, take some kind of blunt object. Make sure they're pushed in. If you have to turn it around, you, you can use a small bladed regular screwdriver. But just make sure they're pushed in. You leave any one of those loose, they're going to come loose. All right, now we got the biggest one, and that's the one for the main motor. So same thing, push it in. Use a blunt object, make sure it's all the way in. Go around, check the wires. Everything looks fine. Some kind of goop all over this bird. I have to clean it off. I put my gluey fingers on here. All right, so there's the upgrade to the FW200. Looks like everything gone okay. Um, without the blades on, let me grab a battery. Grab one of the little 650s. Make sure everything's okay. Locks in. Battery locks in okay. Get things away from the propeller. Move stuff out of the way here. Let me get the radio. Got some glue on the radio. Stop, run, stable, acro, manual, normal, return home. Okay, everything's in the right position. Let's boot her up. See if she don't... Always watch your plugs. These little micro 30s, you can actually put them in the wrong way and smoke your ESC. So make sure your positive negative is correct. Okay, she's blinking green right now. I think I can on, on the FW you can move anything you want to move. It looks like it's searching for a GPS where I'm inside right now. But she she can start. Let 
but everything seems fine. And GP light, the GPS light is blinking green. So I'm going to disconnect her. And if I have time tomorrow, I am going to do a flight video. Let me disconnect the battery. Shut off the radio. Can put my blades back on. But this is Cruise Roy on the FW200, the GPS upgrade. I hope all my fumbling has done someone some good. And just a thing, Flywing, this here is needed on the version 4, the 450. Definitely need that. All right. All right. So it's Cruise Roy. Happy flying with the Flywing FW200. Maybe they'll come out with a 250 if I say 250 loud enough. Fly, have fun, be safe, and I'll try to give you any information I know about anything. All right, this is Cruise Roy, I'm out of here.